In centuries past, the ninjutsu were considered highly illegal by the ruling samurai elite of Japan. Because of this, they deliberately shrouded their origins and activities into the background of history so well, they almost wiped themselves out of it. It has been written that learning the history of the ninja is like trying to follow the roots of a great tree. But the roots we can follow offer telling glimpses into what it truly meant to be a ninja, then and now. Well, hello again. You know, I've received several requests for this topic, and the first question that came to my mind was just what is a ninja? Well, okay, so that's some of what we see today. But if we go back in time, what I found is the ninja was quite different. And in fact, the historical ninja disappeared from the scene almost 400 years ago. It is widely believed that the roots of the ninja can be traced to ancient China. In the 700s, many Chinese warriors, scholars, and monks escaped the civil wars of their land for the sanctuary found in Japan. With them, they brought their wisdom, philosophies, and military expertise. Their beliefs and practices helped evolve what was to become ninjutsu. The life and ideals of Enno Goja are a perfect example of the wandering mountain ascetics of the period. Considered by some to be proto-ninjas, they withdrew from ordinary society, seeking the solitude and hardship of the mountains. Also in this time were bands of forest bandits, the Lian Kui, who had come from China as well and are credited with developing some ninja techniques. But even before these outside influences, there was the Kojiki, Japan's oldest chronicle, which was compiled around 712 AD. In it are stories of creation and the history of Japan, handed down from earlier oral myths and traditions. And among these stories are some tales of an exceptional ancient warrior some consider the first ninja, Yamata Takeru. In one tale, he befriended an enemy by giving him a sword as a gift. Later, he substituted the sword for a wooden look-alike, then challenged his enemy to a duel. The enemy attacked with a wooden sword and was cut to pieces. In another tale, he disguised himself as a female servant at a drinking party. He then seduced and slew the man he'd been sent to kill. Here then, we can see some of the traits that were to become trademarks of the true ninja. And in the centuries that followed, various clans across the land focused on different philosophies and techniques, and they began forming the many schools of Japanese martial arts. What was to become ninjutsu developed mainly in the Iga and Koga regions. The clans of these two provinces used their arts and skills to ensure their survival in a violent time. Many lived peacefully with nature, perfecting their arts and protecting their families. What they developed were methods of gathering information, techniques of non-detection, misdirection, disguise, escape, concealment, archery, explosives, poisons, and skills with special weapons. And by the early 1300s, things had changed. This was the Japanese Middle Ages, and the skills of espionage and assassination were becoming very useful to the warring states of feudal Japan. And yet, at the same time, they were considered dishonorable skills by the Japanese samurai and warlords who needed them. And so these agents were considered to be among the lowest classes of Japanese society. At some point, their collective skills became known as ninjutsu. And individually, they were called shinobi no mono. It was at a later date that they became known as ninjas. So who were some of these famous ninjas? Hattori Hanzo, the most famous ninja of all, died in a fiery sea battle while fighting the Fuma ninja. Their leader, Fuma Kotaro, 
was a specialist in guerrilla tactics and an accomplished assassin. He and his followers became feared pirates, and he was never captured. Momochi Sandayu, the head of three ninjutsu schools, was a master of disguise. It is believed he eventually disappeared into the east, disguised as a farmer. One of his pupils was Ishikawa Gomo, who has been called the Japanese Robin Hood. Legend says he shared his booty with the poor, and when he was finally caught, he and his family were boiled alive. Lady Moshizuki Shiome, a samurai's widow, set up an underground network of female ninjas. Saving orphaned and abandoned young women from a life on the streets, she taught them to be spies and assassins. It was said that Sasuke Sarutobi lived in trees with monkeys and was able to dodge the fastest warrior. When he was finally caught in a bear trap, he amputated his own foot, and when he couldn't escape, he killed himself in front of his pursuers. And Daisuke Togakure, a defeated samurai warrior, escaped to Iga, where he met a warrior monk named Kendoshi. He is credited with later developing the Togakuru school of ninjutsu. In the early 1600s, a new era came to Japan, an era of relative peace. And with that peace, there was no more need for the ninja. They slipped back into the shadows and became the stuff of legend. And as those legends grew, a mystical aura began to surround them. Blessed with superhuman abilities, their stories captured the public, and they began to appear on the Kabuki theater stage. But how were they to be portrayed? Well, the stagehands wore black from head to toe to hide themselves from the audience. And from that, the now famous ninja uniform was born. By the late 1800s, these legends, like the historic ninja, faded into the shadows. The ninja as we know them today began to appear in Japanese cinema, books, and magazines in the 1960s. And by the 80s, they were known worldwide. From small roots in the Iga region of Japan, a tradition and legend had grown into a lush forest. There are a lot of sites out there about the ninja, past and present, and Japanese history. Some are easy to find, some are hidden. But if you're interested, the information's out there. You just have to find it. Today's concept of the ninja is just as valid as in the past. Individuals striving for achievement and ideals while adapting to the times. The only thing I'd change is the costume. As any true ninja knows, the best disguise is to blend into the crowd, to be anyone. Well, I am ninja, he's ninja, she is ninja too. I am ninja, we are ninja, but I believe that you are ninja too. Now that's scary.